What's up, beautiful, beautiful people? Hope you're all doing well. Defender here, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today, we're going to be going through the Destroyer Advanced Raid Build for Rage Hammer. Right, Rage Hammer is my favorite current engraving to use on any class. Uh, Destroyer is my favorite class I'm playing at the moment, and it is just so much fun. Like, there's nothing more satisfying for me right now than swinging a massive hammer. Uh, that looks like a toy, might I add as well, and just bonking enemies, standing in front of them, face tanking, uh, ignoring mechanics, you know, super armor, and just hitting huge numbers, MVPing on stagger and damage, you know, it's just so much fun, right? Uh, so today in the video, we're going to be going through the build, the engraving itself, understanding what it does. Uh, we're going to be looking at the, the skills, the tripods, the rotation, your gems, your cards, the full works, right? We're going to be looking at everything in detail. Uh, we're going to go through some advanced tips and tricks so that you can make sure that you're doing the best in all the encounters. And also we're going to be looking at future-proofing the build, right? So we've got the uh, the bracelet coming, we've got the balance patch coming, which changes some of the um, the important parts for Rage Hammer. Not a lot, but some of it is going to change and we need to make sure we prep for that. And then also we're going to be looking at Brow Shaza and what we can do to be the best destroyer we can going into that content right so stick around follow along with me as we go through destroyer rage hammer enjoy all right so let's dive right into it okay so destroyer is a front attacking class primarily um, and all of its abilities will benefit from front attacking um, so if we look at the engraving itself on a fundamental level right you're going to be wanting to run a rage hammer level three and what it does is it's going to be adding five percent crit and 15 percent crit damage per gravity core that you use when releasing okay so we're always going to be looking to build three cores before we use a finishing skill which means every attack is going to be having 15 percent bonus crit chance and 45 percent bonus crit damage what does that mean well essentially that means we've got a light version of Precise Dagger and Keen Blunt Weapon built into this engraving already. So we don't need to add those to our engraving list. Um, it means that Destroyer um, wants to run crit-based stats primarily to make the most of this because it doesn't have tripods that help with crit rate. Now, as I mentioned, there are some changes coming with the, the class balance patch that we're going to be getting in November. And there are some for Destroyer um that will tweak the current build that we're using um most importantly is a change on a tripod for one of the abilities and i'll touch on that as we're going through the build uh we're going to be getting a new ability uh, i think it's called earth wave um and that is a uh a skill that's more specific to the the gravity training build so right now it's not really going to be one that we need for rage hammer uh so don't really need to know anything about that for now um we're also going to be getting a small tweak to um, the hypergravity mode, which is your your specialty gauge uh, ability. Um, but again, that's not relevant for the purpose of this build. It's a small quality of life thing. Um, so yeah, I'll touch on the tr the changes we need to touch on. But other than that, we're just going to go straight into the, the build for the Rage Hammer. Okay, so let's start with the most important outside of everything else is your combat stats okay so that is the most important thing before looking at engravings before looking at skills before looking at gems you need to have the right stats before you do anything else okay um, so there's two builds you can run for rage hammer both are very similar um, one of them just feels better to play okay so we're looking at um, 1200 crit um, in either of the builds first build is 1200 crit with 800 in specialization Okay, and then the second build is 1200 crit with 500 in swiftness and 300 in specialization. And that one just feels better because of the cooldowns um, and your movement. It's, it's a small quality of life thing, but generally speaking, feel feel better um, with the 500 swiftness, 300 spec build, but you do more damage on the 800 spec build. Okay, so it's up to you which way you choose. You'll make it work either way. It's just personal preference is the one with swiftness and spec. Okay, so the, we've got those stats sorted. We've got at least 1200 crit because we don't have modifiers in our tripods or abilities. So we need high crit. You're gonna wanna use a pet with your crit choice. Okay, let's go through the engravings. So here we've got the, the best in slot engravings you can get right now um, for the destroyer. 
Uh, mandatory is having three on Rage Hammer and three in Supercharge. These are the first two you want to get, right? So the, um, the Supercharge is a given right now. I know that Smarget and AGS are working to try and move away a lot of the Destroyer stuff from this because it's a mandatory engraving to use just because of the charge times being so insane for three of the four of your highest dealing abilities. Um, so yeah, so Rage Hammer is priority number one, Supercharge priority number two, and then you're gonna be wanting to run Barricade and Grudge as your next two, okay? Grudge is a little bit more damage, but obviously has its, its uh, drawbacks as well. Barricade, no real drawbacks, and it applies to all of your high damage dealing abilities. Um, so I would say if you're a new player, go with Rage Hammer, Supercharge, Barricade, and then Grudge. If you're not, then you want to go Rage Hammer, Supercharge, Grudge, Barricade. Okay, and the last one, number five, is a flexible one. You either go Master Brawler, which is more damage, um, or you go Cursed All, which um, is less damage but more consistent. Okay, so Master Brawler has a higher skill ceiling, um, damage ceiling cap, uh, but Cursed All has a less, but it's more um, consistent and you don't necessarily always have to be hitting your front attacks, which can be a pain for a lot of bosses that move around constantly. Okay, so those are the five engravings. Four of these for sure. This one, this last one can be swapped for Cursed Doll if needed. Okay. All right, so next let's go into the abilities. So I would suggest that we always start with Heavy Crush. Okay, this is your bread and butter, your, your filler, your generator with a low cooldown, okay? And this is what you're going to be using uh, at the start of every um, building uh, generator before you do your spenders. Um, and then next, we want to use uh, Endure Pain. Endure Pain is a must for every build. It is your, um, your Get Out of Jail Free card. It gives you uh, super armor. It gives you shield if you want it to. It can give you taunt. It reduces damage. Um, and it also fully generates three gravity cores for you to spend. Okay, so it helps you get in more damage into a burst window or to set up a certain finisher. And then, and it's important on the destroyer to run an ability that has armor destruction. Okay, so you have um, three abilities that are heavily viable with armor destruction, and that is Dreadnought. Okay, so we have armor destruction there. We have Power Strike which has armor destruction in its second tier. And we have Jumping Smash, which has armor destruction in its second tier as well. And they all give you uh, a defense down debuff on the boss, which is one of your synergies as Destroyer that you want to keep up on the boss at all times, okay? So that is one of your roles um, to always apply um, armor destruction as much as possible, okay? That increases the damage everyone does. So it's a really, really important debuff to run, okay? So I would say choose one of those three so Jumping Smash, Dreadnought, or Power Strike. And then your other one is flexible, up to you. Uh, you could run another one like Dreadnought. So I, w I opted for Dreadnought without armor destruction, but I ran Power Strike with it uh, instead, okay? And Power Strike is great because it has a low cooldown. Uh, so you can constantly keep armor destruction up at 100%. Um, and it also has a skill animation cancel if you want it to. And Dreadnought gives you the option for Tenacity, which gives you... Um, immunity to knockback so it gives you super armor and you can run it to have uh, increased uh, damage reduction and also you can put like a, a protection rune on it so it's basically your uh, high mitigating filler and it's also a counter with a weak point damage um, so right now i'm really enjoying playing uh, these two abilities because they both offer counter they both um, have the ability for armor destruction if i want them to and uh, they both have similar animations that you can get used to, okay? And the cooldowns on both are extremely, extremely good. So they line up really well in your rotations, okay? If you were to opt for something like Jumping Smash instead, it's great to um, introduce into the rotation for gap gap fillers if uh, something's moving a lot, like Vicus, or if you need to dodge a lot of abilities on Volten, for example, um, or just for a quality of life thing as a beginner. Um, but I would say try and move away from it as you progress with destroyer because you don't actually um, move across that distance any further than you would if you were just running or dodging okay it's not actually quicker to use jumping smash it's just a an escape option or a gap filling option all right let's talk about the purple skills these are your spenders these are your damage dealers okay and this is what you're going to be using as soon as you have three gravity cores built up in your rotation so 
you're going to be choosing Perfect Swing, Seismic Hammer, Earth Eater, and Full Swing. These are the highest damage dealing abilities that you have uh, outside of the other options here. These are all still viable, but they do a lot less damage and some of them are having reworks, okay? So these are the four to choose, but I'll just show you quickly the options. You want to choose one, two, and two on Perfect Swing. Seismic Hammer, it's actually going to have a change. Uh, right now, you can choose freely between Quick Prep and Tenacity, but Toughened Body is going to be changed uh, so that it does up to 40% extra damage on the ability. So that is going to be our best choice with the November patch update, okay? So try and get hold of a tripod for this and make sure that you store it in your tripod inventory. It's going to be the number one best in slot for damage, 40% extra damage. But for now, we're just going to run Quick Prep because... The skill animation for it can be um, cancelled with a dodge. So I don't feel like mass uh, tenacity is necessary for it. You just run quick prep. Okay. And then we have Earth Eater. Earth Eater is a high stagger ability. It has some charge time and also has a lot of range. But because of its charge time, we're going to choose tenacity. So we're going to run 1-1-1. One, one, one. And then full swing, we're going to run 2-3-1. Okay. And what that does is it lets you use the ability quicker. It has more overcharge levels to it. And it does more damage. All right, so those all need to be maxed out at 12 just because that is the highest level we can currently put them at to do the most damage, right? Every level over 12, increase, uh, over level 10 skill level increases its damage. So those are your four spenders and the priority you want to use them in terms of their damage is Perfect Swing first and then Seismic Hammer and then Earth Eater and then Full Swing, okay? So as you can see at the bottom here, I've listed them in the order I want to use them. Down here, I start from right and then work my way to left as we go through a rotation, okay? Now let's talk about the Awakening. Okay, so the Awakening has two options. And in this Rage Hammer build, both aren't that important, but Big Bang is the higher damage option, okay? Has a few benefits to it. Reduces damage that you take and gives you super armor. So. It can be great for a situation where, say, Volton might knock you off, or um, if you might be in an event where you might get stunned from electricity, like in a Vicus gate, for example. It's a great option to use instead of being um, uh, falling susceptible to a mechanic, okay? It's not going to save you from an ability that would instantly kill you, but it will stop you from being knocked back or um, dying from a, a, a number that would have killed you otherwise with the 50% damage reduction, okay? Now, its damage isn't significant, okay, and that's mostly because you don't have a, a shield up whilst this ability is being used. Um, as you can see, just using the ability itself doesn't give you any shield like the purple ones do when you use a finisher. So as you can see here, you get a shield that pops up, okay, when using gravity cores equal based on the amount of gravity cores you use. Show you that again. As you can see, using three cores, we get 30% shield HP. And that basically means that when we're running a barricade engraving, it's doing full damage bonus on the finisher ability. And that's why having shield is so important to the build. Okay, so it's basically free DPS gain. And if we were to um, just to look at this again, if we look at Big Bang, we're not getting any shield benefit whatsoever from big bang so it's doing very lackluster dps which is why your awakening damage isn't that important it's more used as a flexible um kind of in a utility tool more than anything else um there are a few ways you can make it um used used to its best ability um if you're in a group with uh communications you can ask the support uh to let you know when they're going to shield or if you see a support do their awakening and you have a huge shield you can then quickly proceed to use uh, big bang and that way you'll get the benefit of your barricade um, fully. And then as we talk about gems as well, gems is really, really easy. Uh, you only need four attack gems in total, one for each of the purple skills that you use. Okay, so each one of those has an attack gem, and then a cooldown gem for all four purple skills again, and then one for endure, and then one for each of the two uh, blue skills that generate two gravity cores, okay? So in my instance, Dreadnought and Power Strike, you might run Jumping Smash instead, uh, but you don't need a cooldown or a damage gem for Heavy Crush, okay? So again, four attack gems for the bottom for the purples, and then cooldown gems for the purples for Endure, and then your two double generating core abilities, okay? 
And then if we look at cards very, very quickly. So cards, you're going to want to run at minimum loss, loss win cliff set at 12. Uh, that's for the crit rate. It's very, very important uh, to help bump up your crit rate. Uh, so that we get as close to 100% as we can, just because of our high crit damage multiplier when we're running uh, Rage Hammer and the Entropy set. And then you're going to want to run um, Light of Salvation uh, 18 at least before it's any better than Lost Wind. So uh, Lost Wind 12+, plus, or if you have Light of Salvation 18 or more, that is superior. All right, so let's get into the rotation um, of what it would look like in uh, in a scenario against a boss. If you're running Jumping Smash, you would use that to get into combat immediately. If not, then you would move in and you would open up with your armor uh, destruction, your, your defense down on the boss. That's the first thing you want to get up, uh, not only for yourself, but for everyone in the team. Um, because the sooner that's up, the sooner you can do more damage with your finishes, okay? And it's important then to open up with Endure Pain so that you have push immunity to go into your perfect swing. And also, you can run the taunt on this so that the enemy that you're trying to use perfect swing on is facing you so you do the most damage with your front attack. So initial rotation would look something like defense down, into endure pain, into perfect swing. Okay? And then after that, that is your first rotation. That is rotation number one. You would then go into rotation number two, which is using your heavy crush, into your other blue filler and then straight into seismic okay so as soon as seismic hits that's the end of rotation number two and then we move back into rotation three which is heavy crush with the first blue ability into earth eater okay earth eater is number three in the finishing rotation and then number four heavy crush into dreadnought again into full swing now full swing you are subject to being knocked back Okay, it doesn't have the immunity like Earth Eater would or Perfect Swing would if you're using Injure Pain. So you do need to be careful with Full Swing. It is the, the longest animation out of all of the abilities and you will be uh, susceptible to being knocked back or damaged whilst you're using that ability. So I'll just quickly show you what the full rotation would look like in a perfect scenario. Okay, so you have Defense Down to Injure Pain. It's Perfect Swing. Into Heavy Crush. Dreadnought. Seismic Hammer, and we're going to cancel the animation with a dodge to Power Strike, Heavy Crush, Earth Eater, to Dreadnought, Heavy Crush, and Full Swing. And that is the full rotation that you're going to want to run. And if you wanted to start again, the cooldowns come back up perfectly. See? Okay. And that's the benefit of running 500 Swiftness, is that the rotation feeds itself perfectly with the cooldowns. Okay? Um, so... In fact, you could even change a few of the tripods to suit your needs, like swapping the cooldown on Seismic for Tenacity, so you're less likely to be interrupted on that one as well. Um, but it's personal choice on that. It, again, you can play with these as you're in the situations and see what you like. Okay, so that's the full rotation. Um, basically, you're just going to be building three and spending them in the priority of damage that I told you. Um, you have plenty of counter options in your arsenal if you want them, and you have the ability to have plenty of super armor. Um, one thing to remember is this rotation isn't set in stone, right? Okay, so you can play around your super armor a lot with bosses. I'll show you some footage of how I do it. Basically, perfect swing, you want to get off when it's safe or if you have your Endure Pain up so that you're not knocked back. For example, if you know a boss is staggered, you don't need super armor against them. You can just use your basic builders and then go into Power Strike because there's no danger of being knocked back, okay? But if they are, you want to use Endure Pain. The other way to do it is if you know that the boss is going to be using an ability that knocks you back, instead of just using your ability to get it in before you get knocked back, because it's got a quick release time, for example, Actually, instead, use Earth Eater with its tenacity to avoid getting knocked back. Or if you're going to get bot pop hypergravity, as soon as the, the animation's gone for the knockback, cancel it with X and then go straight back into your DPS. Okay? Use these things to your advantage. Like, for example, Big Bang again. If you know there's a big mechanic coming, maybe it's going to do a lot of damage or yep. it's going to kill you. You quickly pop Big Bang, the mechanic's gone, you cancel early. It doesn't matter about the DPS from it because its DPS isn't that significant in your rotation use it as a utility all right I've, I've got some footage from a variety of encounters and what i'll do is i'll throw that up in the video so you can see that i'm not sticking to the standard um perfect swing to uh, seismic to earth eater to full swing
okay? You don't need to go one, two, three, four necessarily in that order. What you need to do is just make sure you're getting each one of these off safely, okay? And if it means using Earth Eater before using Seismic, that's fine. As long as it stops you from getting knocked back to allow you to stay into the fight, it's more important, okay? Higher up time is more important than doing the rotation in the right order, okay? Because it will correct itself in the long run. As long as you're staying alive, you're staying in the fight, that's more important, okay? All right, well, let's talk about the taunts then. Now, taunts were exclusively part of the, the gun lancer utilities, right? Which makes the, the gun lancer so desirable in many group synergies. And um, it used to have the monopoly on this. However, with the previous patch update, Destroyer also has a taunt reworked into its Endure Pain. Now, if you've played Destroyer before, you understand the value of a taunt. Or if you play Gun Lancer, then you know as well. Taunts are incredibly strong for a lot of encounters. Um, they're, they don't work on Legion Commanders, uh, but they do work on the mini bosses before them. They work in dungeons, they work in Guardian raids, they work in open world bosses. They're pretty much everything but the Legion Commanders. Um, and we can use Taunt at uh, an advanced level to overcome a lot of things, right? So, firstly we know we can Taunt uh, into mechanics and actually cancel the mechanics themselves which can be huge. Um, it also is an opportunity to place a, a boss in a certain direction so that your team can constantly back attack. But not only that, uh, you can also taunt during certain mechanics when a counter attack is up that might have a, an enemy moving as they counter, so a charge for example, and you can actually combo a taunt into a, uh, a counter which lets you counter a boss or a mini boss as they're moving and making them change direction. I'll show you some footage here of, of some that work, um, but there's also some that don't. So you will have to play around with it and experience as you play the ones that you can and can't do, even on the same boss with different movements. Okay. Um, it's also an opportunity to taunt a boss when they're doing a mech, uh, so a mechanic on another member of the party. So for example, we have like um, Kungalinium here in this clip. He's about to do a frost breath on a couple of the back attackers and we taunt away from that. So not only does it cancel the mechanic, but it's also refacing the boss towards you so that they can safely attack from their preferred location. And one of the biggest things I want to talk about in the advanced tips is front attacking. So Destroyer is exclusively a front attacker. Um, you're wearing a, a full set of entropy ideally in the end game, so your front attacks are the most crucial part of your rotation. If you're not hitting them, then you're losing out on a massive chunk of your DPS. Not only that, you're running counters, so it's crucial that you're sitting at the front of the boss at all times. And if the boss is moving or facing a different way, you need to adapt and move to the front. It is always worth it, it's always in your interest to move to the front of the boss for DPS. Even just doing a finisher or building up your, your combo along the way, you need to make sure that you're not losing DPS by attacking from the sides or the back. You'll get used to it with every boss that you try and learning the arcs of their front and back especially with the indicators on, but there are some, some tips that you can do to, to use that to your advantage. So in the clips here, we're looking at a boss with a breath mech, for example, but there are many different mechanisms that you can get used to on bosses, and what you want to do is find a location in that front attacking arc that you can still do all your front attack damage. You'll see the front attack icon come up under your damage or above your damage numbers on screen, so you know that you're in the right location, but you can position yourself in a lot of encounters, still on the front of a boss, but also still dodging the mechanic they're doing. Right, so in, in Kungalinium here, he's doing his breath attack. I'm standing slightly to the side of the breath. There are instances where I do fail this because it's quite a tight window, but it does allow you to still in, endure through the, the mechanism itself, but also doing full front attack damage. It also is a great opportunity to still leave yourself open to counter as well. A lot of the times after a, a, a mechanic that a boss is doing, they might run into a charge or, a, or an opportunity for a counter for another mechanism. And being there still in the front allows you to, to move it into your counter immediately without having to rotate around the boss to get in that location. Now another advanced tip that I would recommend is specifically with the way I run these abilities. Instead of running something like Jumping Smash and opting for Power Strike, Power Strike actually only needs to have its second level of uh, tripods unlocked to be viable. Just for the armor destruction, we don't need to go into the third tier. And then that allows us to work Heavy Crush with Aftershock. Aftershock 
you might look at it and think the damage is uh, insignificant, and that's because, generally speaking, it is, right? Um, we're not running it for its damage. The reason we run Aftershock is so um, you can actually place the ability down on the ground, and if an enemy walks into that damage at any point, it will give you the gravity core. So you can do certain advanced tricks with it, like if a, a boss is immune, immune or you're going to the start of a boss phase and the boss isn't taking damage yet, you can actually put that down on the ground underneath their feet, and during its duration of the five seconds, if it ticks at all and they take damage, it's going to give you a core. So it allows you to get the cooldown going for Heavy Crush and a core waiting to go into your abilities immediately before the fight even starts. I'll try and get some footage for you and put it over this so you can see what I mean. But essentially, a good analogy is uh, if a boss is pheromoned and they're coming back up uh, from the ground or they're staying in the fight, for example, in the Guardian Raid, you put Aftershock down on the floor and then you start to do your Power Strike or your Dreadnought in your rotation. And as soon as they take damage of any kind, so they're not immune anymore, you're immediately going to have three gravity cores ready to instantly go into one of your purple skills. And this is a quality of life thing, right? Because a lot of the time when you're in a fight, the boss or uh, the enemy is going to be moving around a lot and you might miss your skill. But this way, if you miss it, and perhaps the boss is moving back into the location. So like, for example, Vicus. Vicus in phase two is a nightmare for a destroyer just because she moves around so much and hitting the front of her is a real pain. If you're putting down Aftershock and she goes into the sky, she might dash around a few times and then come back down. If she comes back down to that same location in those couple of seconds, which she does a lot of the time, it's gonna give you a gravity core. So it's basically an insurance policy and a way to also start your gravity core rotation as soon as possible. Um, so I really, really recommend this one. I've had a lot of um, benefits and the rotation feels a lot smoother with this. Um, it's helped me quite a few times in my rotations and you'll get used to it very quickly once you start to use it um, and you'll find ways that you can kind of um, play around with it uh, to your advantage. You can actually kind of lead enemies into it um, if you know the, they're aggroed onto you. So yeah, it's a lot of fun and it's quite uh, an overlooked utility tool uh, in the Destroyer Arsenal, uh, but I don't think many people run Dreadnought and Power Strike together. Um, I think they like to have some kind of movement utility, whether it's Jumping Smash or Power Shoulder, just because Destroyer is slow. But I think if you know enough about an encounter, you don't need one of those. You can just run the two counters, um, the two counter attacks and and that way, you know, you can have a, a stronger heavy crush to give you better core generation. Um, and I can't really show you um, a very good example here. But what I'll do is if I remove this boss, so if I put heavy crush down, I move back and then I summon on top. As you can see there, gravity core was generated. And this may just look like a simple thing to put in, but it's actually quite an advanced way of generating an orb. A lot of... A lot of um, bosses move around so much that you'll get used to this and you can use it to your advantage. So it's a small one, but it's it's useful uh, because you can go straight into a fight with three orbs, which is huge. Okay, so just bear that in mind. And if you try using that and you enjoy it, then definitely leave me a like and a comment down below so I know that you're part of the gang. And all right, lastly, what we'll do is we'll just show you a quick pass of the damage that I'm doing. Um, Destroyer isn't known for its damage, so by all means, don't take this as the gospel. Um, it's heavily reliant on being in a group um, for its uptime and for more crit. And just generally uh, to provide its synergy to a group, it's really a group orientated class with its you know, defense down, um, facing the boss towards you so that, enemies, uh, so that the party can attack from behind safely and securely, using the taunt to break mechanics or to give your party a higher uptime on damage, ignoring certain mechanics yourself so that you can stay in um, and just, just the heavy uptime in the front of the boss for counters, for staggers. Yeah, it's just, it brings a lot to a group that's overlooked. Um, and it's solo play isn't that phenomenal, okay? It really shines when you're with other people. So don't take this as the gospel. But I'll just show you a quick one minute pass um, of how uh, you should play the rotation for Rage Hammer. All right. So that's the first rotation with power. Then we're going to do seismic into a dodge. And then we're into the third rotation now with Earth Eater. Okay. And then we're going to run up another builder into the fourth rotation. Full swing. And in this rotation, we're not going to be using hypergravity. 
or um, or Big Bang, okay? Because their DPS losses, like I talked about earlier, we're just going to be doing our standard uh, four rotation DPS. And actually, we're going to dodge there. We're going to go straight into our third rotation with Earth Eater. And as you can see, damage isn't that significant, but our crit rate is pretty consistent just because the high amount of hits that we're putting in. You know, each ability hits multiple times in some form, so we average out on our crit quite considerably. Always remembering to animation cancel on Seismic Hammer if we can, because that is the most important one to animation cancel on. All right. As we can see there, it's not significant, but it's 70% crit, which is about what we're looking at, 71%, so it's... It's par for the course. Um, I'm not sure how that damage looks compared to other other DPSs, um, but yeah, that's that's what we're looking at, um, and that's what the rotation kind of looks like. That just about does it, really. Um, so I've covered the advanced stuff. I've covered the build, covered the rotations, the engravings, the gems, the stats. Um, I will do an updated 2.0 video when the patch goes live, just in case anything does change in the long run. But it shouldn't because it's already in Korea. Uh, just remember, the key point is tripod needs to be changed for seismic hammer and that's going to change to toughened body it's going to change into a dps one and at level five it's going to give you 40 percent more damage instead of 40 percent incoming reduction so that's going to be our number one go-to so if you can get that tripod ready now and store it in your tripod inventory i talk about the tripod system update coming which is in october and how you can max all your tripods for all your classes before that comes out so there's no rng i'll link the video above so you can go to it but it's also in my channel if you haven't seen it already go check it out so that you can get on top of that save yourself a ton of rng save yourself a lot of time looking for tripods save yourself powdered sage save yourself um the odds of getting your your, your upgrade every time transferred just get all these max upgrades it can up to double your damage uh, for some classes. It can change your build into a, the next tier of the skills that you might use in your rotation. It's just a huge game changer uh, in the, the end game experience. So make sure you check that video out. Make sure you're aware of the tripod change because that is going to happen. But apart from that, the only other changes we're going to get are ones that don't affect Rage Hammer that much. Gravity training is the one that's going to get the big change, okay? And I'll do a separate video for advanced gravity training build uh, so that if you guys want to try that one out instead, you can do. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot safer. Um, it's a lot more static. So, you know, you have less versatility and flexibility in the build. You know, you need to make sure you're always front attacking because the ramp up on damage is, is very important. Um, but it's very different. So it's always worth trying both builds to see which one you enjoy more. Um, try this one though because it is incredible. It's so much fun. It does so much damage and you will love being able to stay in the meaty chunky part of the fights at all times. Okay, so check out the footage I'll put on, on the video so you can see how it goes. And yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you've been trying it out and how you're getting on. If you run a different build, what you run, why. Uh, if you like the video, please consider dropping me uh, a like and a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Let everyone else know that hasn't seen this. You know, if they're trying to play Destroyer, why it's so fun. Um, and yeah, just keep on bonking. Enjoy.